Hey friends, Jill here, and today I'm sharing seven things I didn't know until I started cycling. Until I was well into cycling, even, I would say. And I'm going to be rather vulnerable in this video and share things that feel maybe a little embarrassing, so please be kind. But the reason I really wanted to share these things is because when I started cycling, I was really going from zero. I hadn't cycled since I was a little kid. I didn't know anything about bikes or cycling. And so if you are interested in cycling more or going on a bicycle adventure and feeling daunted because you feel like you don't know enough about bikes, you don't know enough about cycling, please know that I really started at zero. I have learned so much over the years and there is so much more left for me to learn but you really can start from wherever you're at. And if you are a seasoned cyclist and bicycle adventurer, then you know you can have a little giggle at my expense and maybe share some of the things that you learned along the way in the comments below because there is so much to learn and I think it's all about having that curiosity and that excitement to keep learning even when it feels uncomfortable or challenging or really out of our depth. Number one. You have to lube your chain. <laughs> starting off with the basics, but this is something I didn't know. I decided I was gonna start commuting by bike. I bought a secondhand little old rally for 50 bucks and I just started riding. And I remember saying to a friend of mine once, yeah, like I love my $50 bike because you know, bikes get stolen in the city a lot. And I love that it's rusty and it squeaks and I don't have to worry about it getting stolen. And she's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great when it doesn't get stolen, but like, you know, you can put some lube on the chain and it won't squeak. And I was like, huh? So, <laughs> so that's something I didn't know, but a very good thing to know because it really helps with the health and longevity of your bike. Number two, tires wear out. Again, when I bought that $50 bike, uh, the first time that it snowed in the city, it was the tiniest little bit of snowflakes on the road. And I was riding my bike and I was slipping all over the road. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I can't bike in the winter, I guess. But I took it into a bike shop and they were like, well, your tires are bald, you need new tires. So I got new tires, although of course it depends on the tire and your comfort level riding. I have been able to bike through the winter since then. Number three, tires vary in quality. So on that same bike shop trip, when I was getting those tires replaced, he was like, you can have the $30 ones or the $60 ones. And I was like, oh, what's the difference? And this is where that staff member could have done better, but he said, oh, there's no difference. And so I was like, all right, if there's no difference, I'll get the $30 one. But then I was commuting my bike daily and I was getting flats all the time, like every other week. And it was on like the fourth flat that I was in the shop and I was like, how can I not see you all the time? <laughs> this time, a different staff member said, well, you could get better quality tires. And I was like, okay. So I got Schwabi Marathons and now get a flat like once a year, if that. So investing that little bit in a good quality tire goes a long way. Number four is how to fix a flat. This is such a simple thing to learn, but it can feel intimidating to beginners and it's something that I took a bit of time with. I started riding a commuter bike in the city and a road bike for triathlons around the same time. And it was explained to me that I really need to know how to fix a flat in case I got a flat in a race. So I learned how to do it on my triathlon bike, but, and it sounds so silly now, but it seemed too intimidating to fix the flats on my commuter bike because it wasn't a quick release, because I didn't know how to get the wheel off. It's literally just a nut that needs to be screwed off, but it seemed intimidating. And so I kept taking it in to get these flats fixed. But being able to fix flats myself now, it feels really empowering. It feels really nice to know that if my bike has a flat anywhere, I can fix it. And it really is so much easier than you might think. And I think it's just a great place to start 
start with getting to know your bike better. Number five, tires have recommended tire pressures. And you can find this on the side of your tire and it tells you the ideal pressure for that tire. It might say something like max 50 or it might say recommended PSI 60 to 80. It gives you an indication of what the tire is supposed to be pumped to. This means that for one, you can avoid flats that might be caused from not having enough air in the tires, but you can also use this to your advantage when you're riding because a higher pressure is going to be more round and firm and therefore roll faster, whereas a lower pressure is going to make the tire a little more soft and malleable and help you feel more comfortable on rougher terrain. Obviously it depends on the tire, but you can do a lot with pressure, which is pretty cool. Number six is that racks have weight limits. I learned this very much the hard way on my first bike tour. I borrowed a family member's bike, then it had a rack on it. And I was like, perfect, it's a rack. So I strapped 50 or so pounds to it on my first bike tour. And on one of my first nights wild camping, I was nervous and I had talked to somebody about wild camping and they said, make sure that nobody sees you get off the road. And I could hear a car coming, so I panicked and basically shoved my bike into a ditch. And that kind of weird angle and fall basically cracked my rear rack in three places the next day I went to a bike shop they didn't have any racks to replace it with but they kind of fixed it with zip ties until I could get the right rack to replace it with turns out that rack was only supposed to carry 25 pounds and I had done probably more than double on it so yeah racks have weight limits number seven fenders are a thing I remember when I first started commuting, I was working as an actor at the time and I had an audition and it had rained the night before, so there was a lot of water on the road. I biked to the audition and I got there with a completely soaking wet bum. There was nothing I could do about it. I just had to do the audition with a wet bum. And on my way home, I noticed this girl riding and the water kind of getting caught by this device. I didn't even know what they were called at the time. I went to my bike shop and I said, I want the thing that covers the tire so I don't have a wet bum. They said, you mean fenders? And I said, yes. And now I have fenders. So fenders are a thing. Okay, those are seven things that I learned over the course of the last many years biking. As a little bonus for patrons, because I just launched Patreon, I am gonna share three more over on Patreon, one of which I think is pretty important and something that I had no idea about until I started working in a bike shop. So if that's something you're interested in, I will have the link below. If you are new to cycling, I hope what I've shared today helps you feel a little less daunted. I really did go from knowing absolutely nothing to now using a bike almost exclusively as my mode of commuting and transportation. I competed in triathlons for many years and I now use my bike to travel all over the world. There is such joy and freedom to be found on two wheels. It just takes a little curiosity and practice and you can soon feel a lot more comfortable on and with your bicycle. Thanks so much for being here. Have a good one. Bye.